Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hook on Heroes. Hit me with another brand spanking new review for Common Rider Geats. Now we're on episode 28 already. Um, yeah, Geats has not only been like consistently strong right from the start, but is probably coming pretty close to being one of my favorite seasons. It's right now sitting at number three. Number two is still Build. Number one is still Forze. Build might be losing that number two spot. I don't know. <laughs> um... But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just been really good. So, leading off of last week, um, we have uh, um, Geats at, uh, was that, at, is that at gunpoint when that happened, right? Oh, I gotta make sure it's all good here. Yeah. Um, he's at gunpoint, I'm pretty sure. Is that episode 28? I'm trying to make sure that was what was happening. I'm pretty sure. So, um, he's at gunpoint, and um, I'm about to get blasted. Baraba is there as Glare 2, of course. And Gene tried to stop her, got his ass whooped. Um, and he's being held down by one of the other um, uh, hacked uh, Jamato rider things. And you can see him kind of like watching Geats and like he's like terrified because he doesn't know what he can do. He doesn't know if anybody can help. And he's he's really worried about it. And it's weird that they play the sound effect that kind of sounded like in X-Aid when like one of the Bucksers would be nearly dead, that little, little glitch sound. So I was like, oh, we're finally going to see his true form because like... If it's it's to be assumed that if Kikara um, said that his you know like, how do you look this human form that perhaps all of them aren't really what they really look like but whatever so they of course are saved by K1 Yeah, they come in uh, K1 using using uh, using command you know, the command buckle even though he's not used it in a long ass time uh, and of course beats for for Nago um, they come in they save everybody um, get them to get the two the two out of there. And back to the, like, you know, base, if you will. And uh, um, we get this really awesome conversation between Gene and uh, Ace, kind of talking about some stuff. And he says, you know, Ace qu qu grills him. He's like, well, what do you care about now? You have to be feeling emotion now, right? And he goes, no, you're right, Geats. He goes, I've never been anywhere near the brink of death before. The way that things work in my world and in my timeline it's never really been a problem being at the brink of death and being so scared that had me terrified. But what had me double terrified was thinking about how many times you've been near the brink of death and yet you still continue fighting on. And that just kind of paralyzed me. Um, which I think was really interesting, uh, that, uh, he described it in that way. I think that was really good. I think it was cool for him to finally have this little breakthrough. I think that so far he's my favorite of the sponsors just because Baraba is just, basically a threat and Kuhn isn't really doing much maybe he gets more focused next episode who knows Kikura is decent but I want the supporters to do more and be more of a part of the story for me to care more about them I don't hate them as a concept but I want to care when certain things happen to them so I'm hoping that they continue to give some decent arcs to the rest of them that are left clearly um but anyway so that's what he basically says to to uh to Ace and he's, you know, appreciates that and says, you know, you don't have to put yourself on the line for me, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, thinking him, but like, you know, saying like I had it handled, whatever. He's like, oh, you were asleep. Not really. And so, um, then go on to talk more about Ace's past. He mentions that <clears throat> essentially in each life, his parents in some, some way, shape or form somehow name him something close to Ace. Maybe Asu in the, um, what's it called? The, uh, Sengoku period or a nickname of Ace, something like that. And not every time that he's been reincarnated has he been a competitor in the DGP. It was the very first one where he was separated from his mother. And then it was the second one uh, where his second reincarnation, where we see the one like white guy from like Greece uh, that doesn't even speak Japanese clearly, that was when he tried searching for it. And that's when he had the little coin because because Jean asked him about the little like Roman looking little coin. He goes, that's another weird thing. He's like, I don't understand that either. Along with my name, with Ace always happening to every incarnation, for some reason, this coin just keeps showing up for me. And every single version of myself that I've ever had, every life I've had, it keeps showing up. Somehow, in some way, I get a hold of it. Um, and even he asked, even he asked, Ace asked uh, Jean, like, what is all this for? What is this loop I'm stuck in? Why does this keep happening? So it seems to be that he didn't quite set it up that way for himself. Um, I mean, the wish said that, you know, the forgetting boost mark two was that his previous lives, basically determination and courage would give him the fire he needs to continue fighting and everything. But he doesn't quite know why he's caught in this loop of resurrection. And I think this is a really interesting angle for a writer show. 
And for a main rider, because you don't really see this, a lot of rider shows have an issue sometimes, not all, but some do, where the main rider is kind of invincible. Like some things happen to him, but for the most part, you can assume he's going to live to the end at least. Uh, but with this, we're not so sure what's going to, going to happen because of the, the nature of his reincarnations. It's almost like a Doctor Who level regeneration type thing. Um, so, uh, anyway, so that happens. Um, and, uh, I think at one point, I think, is this one where, we, where Jean was talking to, no, that was last episode. Anyway, um, we get a bit with the Jamato riders and Michinaga and everything talking about stuff, whatever. Um, and, uh, um, finally Baraba confronts everybody in the Sengoku game again. Um, she comes out with her vision driver or whatever, cause she can use it now, clearly. Um. And Neuram decides to fight this time in his armor with his sword. So he, along with Ace, who comes to help clearly, Neon and Kewa, in their civilian forms, are kicking ass. Kicking the Jamato's ass. I thought it was really cool to see. That was really badass. Um, some pretty decent fight choreography. Um, someone said online, like, oh, what is the side effect of the ninja buckle that it makes Kewa a badass when he's not transformed? <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, I guess so. If Zombie does that for Minchinaka, I guess this does that for Kewa. Um, anyway... So uh, they fight the Jamato off for a while. Of course, they transform. Duh. We do get to see Power Builder one final time, final one last dance into the sunset before we get our, our our form debut. As everyone knows, we get Laser Boost in this episode, and it's a pretty decent debut. So he's Power Builder. He's fighting through, cutting through, using the weapons, stuff like that. Gets his ass beat and handed to him on a platter by Baraba, right? Uh, Mitch Naga and the other you know Jamato riders and people and stuff are there, too fighting each other in separate battles, blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, Ace goes to use boost. He goes, oh, that one, that's got a couple a couple limitations, a couple setbacks, doesn't it? He's like, I don't care. My fire burns bright. I'm going to stop you, blah, blah, blah. Tries to do it, transforms, fights, but of course the, the side effect of it moving so fast, it tires him out, hits, right? Which is a unique side effect. Usually the side effects are like a lot more detrimental than just getting a little sleepy when we get like berserker forms or forms that are really strong that the main rider has to control. Um... But Jean comes out and uh, she she like zaps uh, um, Ace in, in Boost Mark II form and knocks him out of transformation, right? But uh, Jean comes out, it's like blah blah. He's like, here I got part of the Ray's Razor right here, right right there. She's like blah 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 and blasts her, and uh, um, it's cool. So he uh, helps Ace up and he's he's like, you know, I am his sponsor, blah blah blah. I'm here to help him, whatever. Um, and uh, he ends up attaching the laser raise riser to the desire driver. He flip, first he revolves it around so that it's like that, so that the boost mark two is on one side and that's on the other. And then he attaches laser raise riser. And she goes, well, how did that work? And he goes, well, you know that our, our laser raise risers are able to create the ideal form of ourselves. It's doing the same thing for Geats. He, his ideal form is to not be hindered by, you know, the after effects, the side effects of boost mark two. So that's what it's doing for him. So that's how it kind of heals him. It's, it's a... I wouldn't say an ass pull, maybe an ass itch, maybe a, a like a scratch your ass cheek type of answer, but it's it's good enough to like solve the problem, I guess you could say. Um, so he does it and he transforms. We get Laser Boost Mark II, and I like that this is a Sengoku period game for the Jamato Grand Prix because Laser Boost Mark II looks rather samurai like. Um, even uh, Gene says not related to that. He does say, he's like, "Yep, I thought I'd uh, I'd help you out and uh, um, dress you up in my in my colors, like in the colors of your sponsor." It's kind of cool seeing like how like excited and the camaraderie they even both do a snap together and say about um here comes the highlight type thing um so he fights and it's really cool it's a really awesome fight i believe koichi sakamoto directed this episode so he did a lot of the action scenes and you can tell lots of awesome slow motion shots really kick-ass choreography really awesome camera angles and different you know ways they shoot the, the fight he completely wipes the floor with the jamato cracked right you know hacked riders um i don't know why she did that to them you know, it doesn't make them that much stronger she already controls them so i don't know why she needed to hack them but whatever so she does that um and uh he kicks their ass and he actually kicks her ass too um and right at the last second michinaka comes to save her takes her she has the driver he has the driver in his hands and they teleport away and uh jean uh officially gives laser rays riser over to um takes his card out but gives the laser rays riser over to Geet saying that he wants to forge his own path, live his own life, and find out what is his true purpose. And that, you know, he's asking me, he asks him if he's ever going to see him again. He's like, oh, we might cross paths again. Um, he's like, we are both foxes. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cute. Um, it's not just like big brother, little brother type relationship. I like it. It's, it's cool. Um, 
So he leaves, and Ace is excited, of course, to have this form whenever. Um, and right after this, we go over the Jamados um, Grand Prix area, you know, the bad guys, Magoo, and uh, Mitch Naga's there at Baraba, right? And uh, he still has the Vision Driver, and she's like, well, what's our next step? He's like, this, and he puts the Vision Driver on himself and boop, boop, uses it to teleport to the Goddess of Desire and uh, the, the Deseity or whatever, and talks to it, basically, because he can't transform with the the vision driver because he needs the fingerprint or whatever but um yeah basically threatening that you know he's going to get that power from the desire goddess and use it to destroy all common matters blah blah blah, reaffirming his whole goal thing i hope they really get to that pretty soon because it's really starting to get tiresome with michinaka i think he's a really good secondary tertiary wherever you set him in the you know i don't know the ranking of the number of riders in the season and i think he's got a lot he can offer once this storyline is finished and we get to see if he's the one that wins or not or whatever, um, I would like it to be that he somehow in the very last second does win just to see what it would be like if he really does destroy them all or how the wish gets twisted. Um, and would it kill him because he's a rider, you know? Uh, but yeah, I do like this twist that he takes the vision driver from Bear Ball, though in the images for next week's episode, for this week's episode, I'm sorry, recording this for Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, new episode. Uh, I thought it showed him sitting next to her like it's not a big problem, so I don't know, I don't know what's going on there. I would, I would, I would love if he somehow took the Vision Driver and there was some attachment thing that came out for it for him to have a new form. And that's his new upgrade form. But I think I'm more attached to my idea of the whole supporter laser rays riser form for all of the riders who have supporters. I think that'd be really cool, um, especially Michinaga having the white along with his zombie or whatever it might be would be really cool to see. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, overall, really entertaining episode. Fight choreography was great. Um, the Jean and Geet's moments were really, really good. I love the little backstory fill-ins here and there. The reason as to why it uh, fixed the uh, side effects of the Boost, Bar Boost Mark II buckle were really good. Um, and I like Boost Mark II, or uh, Laser Boost. Honestly, to me, I think it looks better than Boost Mark II. Not saying Boost Mark II is a bad form, but I think I like Laser Boost even more. And I don't know why people were shitting on it, because I think it's a badass-looking form. But I really liked it. I love this as a debut episode. I think it had a really good lead-up to everything. And seeing him finally kick Baraba, somebody kick Baraba's ass was just gratifying, because she's so annoying. She's a decent villain, but it's just like, I can't, I just can't stand it when there is a villain in any show that is just somehow, no matter what the heroes do, untouchable and unbeatable in every way, and they never get, nothing ever happens to them. It's like, it, there's no point. You're not a character. You're just a, a force of nature, I guess, a wall. <laughs> so I'm happy that Geats is kind of sidestepping that a little bit and showing that even she can be, you know, beat up a little bit. Oh, we also get a little half mention from Gene that uh, he says, hey, he's like, because it, 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 he says that the laser rays riser, you know, physical physically creates or kind of forms formu, uh, formulates your like uh, physical ideal form right and he goes yeah like you like you're like 350 years old aren't you <laughs> so <laughs> I saw two things one person was like online about this reaction wise they were like either she's a old hag witch in the and in, in making herself look like this like teen idol girl or have it be straight catfish and it's this really gross looking old man who's making himself look like this <laughs> So we'll see where they go with that. Um, but uh, overall score-wise, probably a 9.5 out of 10, I would say. Um, it wasn't necessarily a 10 out of 10 debut, but I really did like it. I think we did a really good job with the form debut, the fight, um, every, most of everything leading up to it. Um, I think the ending part was cool with Michinaga taking the driver, but I want to know what the fuck that means exactly. And finally giving an end to that whole, I wouldn't destroy all the thing with him so he can do anything else in the show besides be essentially Baron from Gaim 2.0. Um, but overall, really good episode. But let me know in the comments below. What did you guys think? Did you love it? Hate it in the middle? Um, as far as content, uh, King Oger episode 4 review should be up around the time this is up. And as far as Hensions and Homies, we finally have our guests we're going to be having on. Uh, so we're going to be having uh, Jay Brex on and um, uh, Britt Grayson on again uh, to discuss our topic, which is Toku Twitter is... The beauty slash ugliness of Toku Twitter. And then also our favorite outrageous, funny, exciting, insane moments in Tokusatsu. And that can be like the shows, character moments, a fight, a henshin sequence, a death, story moments. Uh, it could be reactions to that, stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty fun tonight. So definitely tune in 7.30, or sorry, 7.45 slash 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and let us know. Uh, jump into the chat and uh, definitely 
get in there and uh, bend our ear to what you got to say, you know. Um, but uh, as always, thank you so much for subscribing, for watching, for sharing, for liking, all that really good stuff. I really, really appreciate it. But until next time, stay hooked on heroes. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye-bye.